Not thinking about the gemstone. Gotta get the money. Okay, no, no. I know I'm a dragon. I love treasure, and but no. Okay, I get the money. Nope, nope. Okay, yeah. Oh, let's fight the temptation, Spyro. I get the money. I did not play the Spyro games when they first came out. I wasn't one of those cool kids with the PS1. But since the video game industry is going back to the 90s for fresh ideas, I get to play the Reignited Trilogy featuring Spyro the Dragon, Ripto's Rage, and Year of the Dragon. The first thing that impresses is that this is not just the HD up-res I've seen other games do. Hey look, our polygonal figures have smoother lines! No, they rebuilt these games from the ground up. All you have to do is look at one of the million visual comparisons between the original and Reignited to see the overhaul they did to these games. Also, it sounds way better and they updated the controls. I'm pretty sure a skeleton doing the floss was also not in the original game. So that's an improvement, I guess? Uh, you know what, Spyro? I agree. What I really liked is that the visuals are now the same for all three games, making the Reignited Trilogy feel more like one large game in three acts, rather than three shorter games. Even taken as one large game, it's still about 30 hours of gameplay, but make no mistake, that gameplay is jam-packed with content. The worlds you visit are compact and quick to move through, but chock full of stuff to do. Before you know it, you'll be flamethrowing, headbutting, and skateboarding... I... really? All over the place. The big complaint I had with gameplay was with the inverted controls for flying and swimming. There is no option to switch that back, and I found it really frustrating that I'd be running forward, hit a flight gate, and immediately crash into the ground because I forgot we moved to pilot controls. But, you know what, that's a personal preference, I suppose. Not thinking about the gemstones. Just staring straight ahead. I get to the money! Okay, okay, nope, nope, I get to the money! Oh, God, it's so hard! I get to the money! Oh, wow, I get to the money! Oh, ah! Uh. These games remember how to have fun with their characters. Like, Spyro keeps coming up to these hulking enemies, and you're like, Oh man, how do I deal with this? Then you just shoot some flames, and down they go. It's so charming that a scrappy little dragon can just insta-kill everything with fire or headbutts. Hero or villain, everyone is super animated and enjoyable to watch. There are some strange difficulty issues. Like, most of the gameplay is pretty streamlined, and easy to pull off. The flight missions are a little trickier just because of the inverted controls that I mentioned before. But then, you hit a boss battle, and they decide it's time for things to get real. I just gave up on Nasty Nork because I didn't want to chase the same key thieves around every time I wanted to fight the boss. The later installments were better, and I was able to take Ripto and the Sorceress down with limited frustration. It was mostly reserved for their underlings, surprisingly. Oh, I think I found the most annoying character. Boy, I hope you're not going to talk like that for the entire game. Oh no, you're back, and yet you're still talking that way. <sighs> I can skip dialogue, right? I there we go. So much better. Oh wow. Whoa. Okay. Oh. Okay, you're not quite as annoying now. Okay, kinda. Year of the Dragon does something interesting by introducing other playable characters, giving you some small arenas to try gameplay types beyond Spyro's moveset. Like a kangaroo to bop enemies on the head, or a penguin to rain down missiles upon the land. You know, penguin stuff. And I've hidden them in places you'll never find in a thousand years. Oh, we'll see about Besides, that. Even if you could find any eggs, uh, our expertly trained armies would hunt you down and take them back. Have you met Do me? I make myself clear. I'm Spyro. If I find you here again, I am going to be very angry. Oh, no. And you won't like me when I'm angry. <gasps> Bianca was the Hulk the whole time. I guess the strangest thing about this is that we need to reignite all these old franchises to find a solid new experience. Because this trilogy does feel new. 
It feels fresh and wholly different from games released this year. It revels in its sheer exuberant joy, watching a tiny dragon burn the world around him. Its characters are charming and full of life. The gameplay is simple enough to pick up, but has enough tricks to keep you engaged. It's jam-packed with stuff to do without creating sprawling sandboxes in the process. It ends up begging the simple question, why can't companies just make games like this anymore? I mean, they tried with the likes of Super Lucky and Ukulele, but those games just didn't feel as enjoyable. Maybe because Lucky is a pretty boring character. Maybe because Ukulele was a disjointed, highly cynical, and frankly worse version of Banjo-Kazooie. Maybe because this was Insomniac. All possible explanations. But it does make me look forward to the next rebuild of a 90s series. Oh, what's this? Crash Bandicoot? Oh boy. It's just so close. I can't quite reach it. I can't quite reach it. My little paw just can't quite reach it. No. I get to the money. But I can't get to the money. What cruel trick is this? Come on. I get to the party. Oh, come on. Ah. Ah, I ran out of time.